welcome. Good morning. Just by way of brief introduction, I am Chaplain or Reverend Linda Campbell. Um, I'm retired and I completed my last 20 some years of ministry at the St. Cloud Veterans Affairs Medical Center in St. Cloud, Minnesota and was a chaplain, clinical educator, and um, supervisor, you know, the, the boss of the chaplain. So um, thank you for having me here with you to worship. I understand that there's at least one announcement. Um, I'm aware of a mission trip, and we're wishing them farewell as they head out to Milwaukee. And I know people are having surgery. Um, and there are other needs, but announcements. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm shorter than you are. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, as you know, it was the garage sale was this past week, and um, we did really well, and now is the time for you to go down after service today and look through all those wonderful items and see if you want to take something home. Um, <laughs> please go down and look. <laughs> and uh, you can take what you want. If you feel the overwhelming need to donate money for it, go right ahead, but you don't have to. You can take it. Just take it. <clears throat> so, and after today, we'll start packing up. So if you have time, in your busy schedules, um, at your leisure, come over and help pack up. And next Sunday, we'll have a real pack up. So after service next week, if you can kind of plan it in your schedule to pack everything up, that would be great. So, all right. <clears throat> this is a great height inducement here. What does that add? Six inches? Um, thank you for that. Any other announcements before we continue with worship? All right. We will not be doing the gathering song. And, correct. And we will begin with the call to worship. God of abundance, the land we walk on is holy ground. Send forth your grace to help us heal the wounds of this world. Open up the soil of our hearts to your word of life. May we be strengthened by this time together and grow into who you are creating us to be. Look at the 
seed, it knows what to do. New life will spring forth from its falling. And we as people of Sisters and brothers, we come to the God of mercy, mindful that the world upon which we all depend is suffering. The sacred creation given to us, the immense beauty surrounding us, the complex web of life supporting us has been broken, not only by others, but by our own hand. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Loving God, you have placed us as stewards within your creation. Instead, we have abused your gifts. The beauty and abundance of the earth is falling apart under us. God of all life, we confess our part in a broken world. You have multiplied your people beyond counting and have provided enough for all, but we have poisoned the waters exhausted the soils and polluted the air. By our own hand, we have spoiled the life-giving resources upon which we all depend. God of all life, we, we confess, confess our part in a broken world. As Jesus' disciples, we are called to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and tend to the sick. Instead, we have taken the wealth of the world into our own houses and left your children in hunger and need. God of all life, we, we confess, confess our part in a broken world. Through famine and 
As surely as the rain comes forth to water the earth, God's mercy comes to us as a gift, abundant and freely given. The same God who created the cosmos and raised Jesus from death to life brings healing and forgiveness to the world today. You are loved. You are restored. In Christ, you are made new. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. The eyes of all look to you, O God. Turn our hearts and minds to your open hand that provides for every living thing so that we may know your generosity and participate in the healing and restoration of all that you have made. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading this morning is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people." To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope and glo- the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, Hope. What a wonderful name. Thank you for this opportunity to worship with you in person and online. One of the themes of today's readings is hospitality. And as a visitor, I have the pleasure of experiencing your hospitality as a congregation. 
and individually as you greeted me this morning. From the communication before arriving to the location and building and to the people I meet, all speak of your hospitality. Each of today's readings reflects the value placed on hospitality at the time it was written. Mary and Martha are hosting Jesus and his disciples in a community and time when hospitality was an expectation rooted in a heritage that saw hospitality as something more than a warm greeting. The Jewish people descended from nomadic tribes whose very existence depended upon sharing food and water with both relatives and strangers, allowing them to be refreshed and filled before the next leg of their journey. Hospitality meant water to drink, food to eat, a safe place out of the elements to shelter, and perhaps water for washing and cleansing. In our first reading, hospitality is a little less tangible, yet life-giving. In the letter to the people at Colossae, part of the world beyond Israel, a congregation that included non-Jews, Gentiles, we hear the story of Jesus described cosmically. I think of the web camera, the telescope out there, and those pictures cosmically. This God who took on human form to redeem sinners not only reconnected Jews with God, Christ's reconciliation, Christ's restoration of God's relationship with the people of God is for all people, Jews and non-Jews, all people, everywhere. And this reconciliation not only sets right the relationship with people, but also with all of creation. God's hospitality, God's welcome extends to the cosmos. What does hospitality look like for you? When is it that you feel welcome? Perhaps it's when there's free coffee, or even better, it's espresso. Espresso, no X in there. At some business, the place where I get my car service used to have cookies until COVID. That was hospitality. They sent me cookies and charged me a lot, but, <laughs> but it was hospitality. Or maybe there are little bits of hospitality that remind you that someone's thinking of your well-being, like tissues and hand sanitizer and masks and gloves. Maybe you're made comfortable by these or other signs of welcome that reassure you that people in this place have your best interest in mind. I'll let you each think of your own sign of hospitality. My mother was the youngest of seven daughters and two sons, all of whom married and had at least two children. My experience of hospitality is shaped by gatherings of aunts, uncles, aunts, uncles, cousins, usually at one another's homes. And while we gathered in Invergrove Heights, Excelsior, or Minneapolis, were different places and different homes, the roles we played were similar. You, you know it, the women gathered in the kitchen, visiting, preparing the food, and cleaning up after the meal. Children played all sorts of games, board games and outdoor games, and tried to stay away from the women who might ask them to help. Oh, some of you did that. <laughs> and the men retired to another room or commonly the basement to play cards 
and smoke cigars. Everyone knew their roles, including Aunt Laura and Uncle Joe, and I have changed their names. We just are too close here in Jordan. An hour or so into the card game, Aunt Laura would begin regular trips to the sanctity of the card room to let Uncle Joe know it was time to go home now. And Uncle Joe would either ignore her and fend her off and likely complain to his fellow card players, or he would comply and dutifully get up to go home now, depending on how he was doing in the card game. Everyone had their role in these get-togethers, each providing the expected hospitality of bringing and preparing food, supplying cigars or cards, or making a place for the games. Mary and Martha, way back when, had similar expectations. They would have been hurrying about, preparing the house, getting water, food, wine, and providing other tangible expressions of welcome. For those of us trained to meet these expectations, it is a bit shocking to hear Jesus' response to Martha. I won't make you raise your hands, but how many of you think Martha got a raw deal? <laughs> and I think that fits a lot for church people who do a lot of things. Mary has taken the unusual and culturally unacceptable act of sitting down with the men, listening and engaging with Jesus in talking about important matters. I don't know if they had cigars. This is an affront to her sister and the picture of hospitality as actions of welcome. This is different, a different form of welcome Mary chooses the type of welcome that we might call being with and giving her full attention to Jesus. We likely know who we are in our usual way of providing hospitality. Are we Martha's or Mary's? Are you someone who actively prepares and sometimes spends much of your time with others busy with getting this or that, or busy in some other way that takes you away from the others. There are so many possibilities of escaping being with people. We used to time my mother. This is really bad, we'd get watches out. There were five of us kids. We used to time her as to how long she would actually sit on the chair in the dining room with us for dinner before getting up to go do something else. There is physical absence, and then we find other ways to leave, no longer in company with others, including our closest loved ones. Perhaps you share some of Mary's qualities, and when you are with someone, they do have your undivided attention. I just want to say that this is a real gift to other people for the times when you are able to do that. It's actually uh, the nugget that I tried to teach chaplains, just to be there. Yet, I have wondered if Jesus was biased. It, he was a male. <laughs> um, <laughs> What if we only had Marys in the world? What, what would happen if there were only Marys? Was he really saying that it would have been better for Mary and Martha to have left meal preparations and house cleaning undone and both sat and talked? <sighs> Unfortunately, my questions reveal that my questions are Martha questions. These are the kinds of questions Martha would ask. What if everybody was a Mary? 
Oh, Jesus, which is it? You have water for washing your feet and a hot meal, or I sit here with you. Martha is an either-or person. It's this or this. She's also angry and indirect. Martha doesn't go to Mary and say, hey, Mary, can you help? Maybe there were good reasons she didn't. Martha interrupts Jesus to point out that Martha's done all the work. Not only does this let us know she's angry, but that she isn't providing hospitality as an expression of her care for Jesus. There is really no joy here. She is doing this work as a duty, an unhappy result of her situation in life. She was expected to do this, and she did it, but she wasn't happy. She exposes Mary and lets all who listen know that she, Martha, is displeased by Mary's choice. Mary has broken the rules that Martha feels obligated to keep. Maybe you have been in this place in one or another of these roles, feeling trapped by obligations and expectations, doing things because you have to or because you can't see options or you don't see any choices. Jesus' response to Martha is about options that are not obvious, simple, or without repercussions. Early in my professional life, I thought making a hard but good choice would be rewarded. Okay, all of you wise people already know this isn't true. I soon learned that choices, even if they're good choices, good for me, still have consequences. Taking a personal health day still meant I'd use a vacation day. Our tough but good choices do have a cost. Jesus would have been expected to agree with Martha. We likely have this story in Luke. No, is this Luke? Well, wherever it's written here. Luke. Yes, Luke would write that down. We have this story because it surprised people. If he'd just gone along with the norms, probably it wouldn't have been remembered. Jesus didn't pass along Martha's displaced anger at having spent her day doing duties rather than spending time with Jesus to Mary. Instead, he turned back to Martha to remind her that hospitality is meant to come out of a sense of joy, a welcome, an expression of what we feel inside. And he recognized that setting, sitting with him was a way to welcome him. It may be hard not to see this as Jesus' endorsement of all Marys. And I don't expect you or me to all of a sudden think Martha didn't get a bad deal. Jesus does give an endorsement of seeking ways to live out welcomes in ways that reflect joy rather than duty. Many of you may be familiar with the various languages of love, how we prefer to give and receive love, or hospitality can vary. Some people like words, some like actions, some like gifts, and other people get pissed off at those same things. One is not better than the other, but knowing what each other values is enormously important in recognizing when others are showing their care for us and allowing us to receive it graciously. We recognize the creation in our worship today. Just as we have our tendencies to be Mary's or Martha's, there are a variety of ways to show our care for creation. In policy making, individual and communal acts, each of us have a part to play in our relationship with the environment. We benefit from learning more about the complexity 
and the consequences of our choices. While we may have settled into roles that our identity or socioeconomic standing dictates, we are challenged by today's lessons to continue to reflect and question what unconventional and unexpected ways we can make choices that both give us joy and support creation and our relationships. Together, as a congregation, it may be yet another way to be hope in the world. Amen. Please join me now in expressing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The response to God of grace is, hear our prayer. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you will fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing. Teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you created all things visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, <clears throat> especially Claire, Destiny, Eileen, Carol, Katie, Jerry, and Brett. Sustain all those who serve as caregivers. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your word for your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. We ask your blessing on Pastor Ted, Kelly Lorenz, and our youth as they travel to Milwaukee to serve others. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Oh uh -huh. 
saying, take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. regarding communion other than all are welcome. And for those who are younger, it would assist me if you are receiving, if you would extend your hand, well, everyone, extend your hand to receive the, the host. Again, all are welcome.
Christ our Lord. Amen. The benediction. May God, our creator, bless and keep you. May Jesus, child of the earth, walk with you. And may the Holy Spirit, wind and fire, give you hope and peace. Amen. As we sing the sending song, uh, let's uh, do the, uh, the final refrain in Spanish as Hans Peterson taught us uh, several years ago. The refrain only, because none of us are all that good at the rest of it. <laughs> dire need for taco people. Uh, a lot of the 4 to 11 streets, a lot of the 4 to 11 is open. And this was a village, a huge part of, I think I just our general fun, but I'm not really sure. Um, they are four hour shifts, but if you can come for two hours and sit on a stool and do the chips or the cheese or whatever, we can put you to work for two hours and we'll figure out the other two hours. So right now, we really need some sign-ups. Otherwise, you're all going to get a phone call anyway. So just sign up. And uh, Danielle, do you need help still for VBS? So that's the other thing we have going on. And again, we serve a lot of our community for VBS, not just our church. So anybody who can deal with children for a few hours a day. There are lots of things that you can do from treats to crafts to just making sure they get from point A to point B. So if you need, you know, a kid fix, please get a hold of Danielle Tebin. Thanks, guys. Go in peace. Care for all creation. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.